turn Welcome my mic to back on. Ooh, you're back on. Let's <sighs> see. I'm just waiting for one more player to join. He has been made aware that the game is going live. Hmm. Um, by the way, you guys were saying that this is in Allie's comic world, which is amazing. I can't wait. And I also want to do that for Path of the Pale Rider. That would be a wild place to have a D&D game. We would all die. Okay. That would be great. Um, <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, Pops. I know what I'm doing now. Yes. Can you do me a favor and mod Adrian Elliot? Oh yes. Oh yes. Let me go over there. Go over there and find this the stream on YouTubers. There it is. Hi David. Hello. I'm Laura. Steve. Yep. Adrian, you are now a mod in the match. And uh, Adrian, just uh, make a comment on the Twitch channel, and I will mod you there. Let's see. Most excellent. I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time. Welcome to Madness Gaming, Episode 1. I love it. Nice. <laughs> All right. Any week now. So Chris right now is creating. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry. Oh, no, it's no cool. worries. Your last minute ad. So he's, he's <laughs> creating his character. Uh, Lori just created hers a little while ago. I've had mine done yeah. for a week or two. Um, I had to re-figure out who he was again. Um, David. Yes, yeah. David. What what kind of what kind of a what what kind of character are you bring into the game, bro? Uh, I'm thinking half orc barbarian. Half orc barbarian. Yeah, I can see where a half orc and a half elf would be friends. I can see that. <laughs> That'll work. Well, We're the... both outcasts, right? Right. Uh, so... <laughs> Dave, just so you can see it in the private chat, I just posted a link to a notion doc that has a lot of information on the races in my world. Okay. Um, the half orcs have a listing there. Um, let's see. They are known as Scourge Touch. The Scourge are a hive mind that consumes and corrupts everything in their path. The primary foot soldiers are basically orcs. Orcs make half orcs with anything they can. So you're half orc, half something. Oh, we don't even know what what your other half is. Ooh, that could be <laughs> you um you had a like a human parent or something like that. But... Okay, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, something. Could be oh, something. He's like I'm out. Oh no, he's like <laughs> <laughs> Come back, David. Come back. He probably touched yeah. the button by accident. <laughs> What did you say? Scourge, scourge touch? Or scourge <laughs> touch. Yep. Welcome back. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Chris. I just need a hat. Chris Chris is just like demon dog. I got like I six of them. Demon dog. Oh, well, just teleport one to me, please. I should. I should. Yes, you should. You know, no, as much as I play golf, <laughs> not, as, as much as I play golf, and I've never owned a hat like that. You really? You already have a hat. Well, I got two. I got a couple of different hats that I wear for golf, but I mean, I've never had one of that style. You gotcha. know, um, see a lot of golfers wear those over the years. You know? We're just gonna. I'm trying to get through it as quickly as I can for you. Don't worry about it. Just take your time. If you have questions about the world, I'm, um, uh, was it, uh, willing to answer and stuff? Okay. Make Adrian a mod over there. I thought you could just click on them and hit mod. Okay. 
Yes. Adrian is my intern and also my mod um, for my Twitch stream and things. So that's why I wanted to get them modded on this. And that is good. So, Chris, any ideas of what you're doing? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Uh, when my brain starts, when, when it goes, it goes. Um, it is done. I exported to PDF. Um, what do you need me to do from there? Well, uh, you you loaded the above VTT thing, right? Yes. And you're part of my campaign, correct? Um, beyond. That's what you need to do. It says on D and D Beyond, and I used the link that you chose. Okay, so if you go into the campaigns on D and D Beyond, you'll have your character there. At least it should be um, listed in there as an assign as a character in the campaign. All right, let me do this one more time. There, there, there. We go to that. Close that. Close that because I forget what that was. And there we go. All oh, should be all five by five. Let's see if I, I don't see know that I. Join above TTT, and we did that. Yep, and you just want to give yourself an image, so okay. like a just a image for your character. Yeah, I'll find. All right, very let good. me know how I do that. What's up, Past Master Dan? <laughs> I've heard whispers. Same guy, buddy. Same time. I got you. I got you. Dude looks like this. I'm going with this dude right there. It sounds good. Check, check, check. Test one, two. He's kind of a sexy beast right there. Well, that, that works. We can have sexy beasts. <laughs> okay. What the mother in hell? Go. Okay. So then I'm going to come back to here. Go to this. Close that. Now, come into the campaigns thing and view the campaign. Okay. Not sure why the image didn't edit, but I did pick one. It shows here on the sheet. Let's put it that way. Okay. Well, I it, show. Should show, it should show up, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm just re-logging into the campaign myself because I'm not seeing all the characters. Yeah. Yeah, I never did it on here before, so I mean, this will be this will be new and different. We uh, are about to play a game, Dan. We're about to play a game, bro. We are. It's we're madness. About to play, we're about to play D and D. <laughs> what the hell am I watching? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I haven't had a chance to take a drink yet. So. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I need to get something. I just have water. There's there Chris's there. screen right there. Yeah, I'm not seeing your character yet. What was that? There's Chris's screen right there. Yep. Okay. So I went into here. I went to the campaigns, right? Yeah, I and see I you in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you go, yeah, go into view campaign. And, yep, um, Then you just hit join VTT down at the bottom on next to your character. Yep. Yeah. And that's it. You're in. That's what we should be. Okay. Yep. We'll just, I'm um, not seeing your picture yet to see the default one. But you said oh. you put one in there, right? Yeah, that was, uh, is there a way to, where do I see the characters at? The sheets. Well, if you open your character. Well, I just figured I'd show it on the one that I was sharing. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So Yeah, it'll catch up. I'd say yeah, it's 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 in there. It's just Yeah, it just hasn't shown up yet. It's not video. Yeah, I was gonna say it's weird. You can see it right there. 
Yeah, Dan likes Daniel. Daniel. So cool. You Dan get to play as Fabio. I am a sexy <laughs> piece, right? Life imitating art is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a sec here. I want to give a difference. Okay, so there's all that. Okay, so this is the campaign setting itself. This is the campaign world. Um, mm -hmm. There are there are a few continents that aren't on here, but it gives you kind of an idea. Like the eastern kingdoms are somewhere off to the east, or what they call the sunset lands. That'd be the Asian setting. Um, the primary bit of the campaign is in this area right here, the Empire of Shadow. Uh, three cities are basically city-states that rule themselves. Um, the Empire has actually come in and taken over the small area up here. Hmm. Let's see. The Goblin Highlands are basically where there's a lot of goblins. Um, and goblins are not immediately an evil race. They tend to be... Well, they're a little quirky uh, with some of the things that they do. Does it come to the <laughs> No. Um, Only if you got a the scourge. Plans. These were human-occupied areas. Then came the scourge, which for the most part, wiped it out and corrupted the lands. People escaped north into what is the Empire of Shadenholt and what was now the Empire of Shadenholt. And a dwarven kingdom, which is in these peaks that kind of come down around here, with a powerful um, human wizard erected what they call the Blood Gates, which blocked out the area uh, from the Scourge. Um, the Scourge is... Um, was it The Blood Gates are manned by... Basically, all of the races have something against... Uh, you know, have people on there to fight the scourge. Um, the land, the land in front of it is um, has been permanently stained red with blood uh, on the gate on the scourge side. So that's what I call it, the blood gates. Um, but even uh, the dead have people on the wall. There is a dead city that is ruled by a, an entity known as Koshay. He's also known by his title of Deckless. Uh, so, the dead don't even want the scourge anymore. And the dead city is somewhere in this area. People apparently don't go there. The Empire itself is a majocracy. The Emperor Shadenholt is a um, very powerful magic user. Who has a was it an adventuring group that serve him directly? And bear with me. Going through some of my notes. I get for using a legal pad. Lots of handy stuff everywhere. <laughs> and imagine why. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Maybe if we put David up there, he'll stay connected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing around with the app and I'm. Keep logging myself out. I apologize. No Stop doing that, David. <laughs> I'll get the hang of it eventually. Pause. Now 
No, um, for you mods in the YouTube chat, anytime you hear something in the game that reminds you of somebody's project, drop the link to their project. Don't be shy. That is the main reason we have a network is promoting. So don't forget. Okay, don't forget. Don't get caught up in the game and forget why, you know, why Pops does this in the first place. Promotion, promotion, promotion. So the. All right. Well, they're basically they're called the Chosen. Um, they have a very very long title, but they're usually just called the Chosen because it's easier to say. Uh, they are chosen by the Augurs to serve the Emperor of uh, Emperor of Shadenholt. Uh, the standard of money in this campaign world is silver. Hmm. Now it's known as commonly imperial currency. The Golds are often referred to as crowns, silver, swords, copper, shields. The um, the common folk generally refer to the gold as a noble, a um, <clears throat> was it a silver is a soldier, and a copper is a beggar. Sometimes they also re uh, refer to uh, gold as "get your hand out of my pocket, you little shit." So there are higher forms of currency as well. There are uh, some unique metals to the campaign setting. For instance, Tempest Steel um, is a very hard metal to work, and it is believed to have come from the storms. Nobody truly knows, but the people who manipulate it are very rare. Um, it makes a very, very sharp blade. Hmm. The other unique element is Spider Silk. It's a very, very lightweight um, garment, uh, and it could, if you have enough of it, and a weaver, the weavers are basically driders. Um, there is a spider empire known as the Cobweb Courts. Um, they are um, practice the art of weaving, and they have made a, um, they can make armor out of this that has like no disadvantages so like plate mail armor that you would get your full dexterity bonus with potentially it is very very expensive to get and to bargain with the spiders is dangerous um most of the great noble houses have uh at least one set of this armor the emperor has three <laughs> Hmm. On top of that, um, oh, the nobility tend to have like Roman esque names. Um, the common folk tend to have names after like their jobs and other such things, or sometimes seasons. And uh, the group that was up here before tends to have, uh, before the Empire kind of moved in from the Scourge Lands, tends to be more Russian oriented and Slavic in nature. Um, the other big thing is the institution of slavery. Slaves are a common thing in the Empire. Ah, I, found, I found the title I was looking for initially. I'll we'll get back to that. Um, there's a stone citadel, uh, which houses the Order of the Hammer and Chain, and they are monk alchemists, effectively. They're known as the Iron Taskmasters, and they handle all the slave trade throughout the empire. Not all areas have slaves. The free cities, for instance, generally do not have slavery. Um, a slave is marked with different symbols to denote um, what they can do and how prominent they are skilled at the, of what they do. Um, a simple square denotes a um, that's always on the cheek about here is where the symbol appears. A hmm, simple square is the lowest form of a slave. That is like your common slaves, generally an untrained worker uh, would have it. And um, hmm, give me a second. Trying to find my graphic on it. Uh, 
That's one of them. That's the same one. Let's see. Then you have the upside down triangle, which is another one that denotes a skilled laborer of some of some measure. It also denotes a trained warrior. Uh, like a gladiator or something of that nature uh, would have something of that name that type you say a triangle upside an upside down, down triangle. triangle upside down okay it's it's, see, it's a good thing to uh take no joke because mm -hmm. uh what you don't know can kill you mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like who are you talking to right now stop that <laughs> uh, let's see there's also um a circle uh, that denotes a person who has who has training in magic uh, of some nature. Hmm. Uh, also, could be like denoting a head of house. It could denote a doctor or a teacher, somebody who's very very skilled at something. Uh, still a slave, though, right? Still a slave. Wow. But there are ranks trained, among slaves. Trained slaves in magic—that's ballsy. They do. Oh. It's a majority. <laughs> They generally don't train them in combat magic. I see. Hmm. Oh. Still. So on top of that, you have... Um, hmm. Then you have um, the final one, which is the, the topmost slave, which is the Lamasid. an infinity symbol. They tend to be the, the most expensive. They have abilities that are above and beyond um, the norm. Um, for instance, a, um, I'm trying to think of the, I uh, want my damn graphic. Give me one second. We'll find it. I think I have all this stuff prepared today. I did somewhat. There it is. Okay, so. All right, so um, the square would be like a general laborer, house servant, or a sex slave. The upside down triangle, soldier, guard, or gladiator. The, um, the circle is a teacher, scholar, major domo, or a specialist of some nature. The lama set or the infinity symbol is actually wizard slash magic user or mariatrix. Um, so like all things, they're separated into casts, um, they're all alchemically branded, um, uh, and organized by the skill and how dangerous they are. And yes, my gentle friends, a matrix is very useful, highly skilled, and extremely dangerous. That is basically a very high-end sex life. Um, cool. And on top of that... The ways of dealing with said problem with the iron, um, the iron citadel, well, the order of the hammer and chains. Um, they have an operation in all the major cities across the empire, and they alchemically brand the slave with these marks on them. Um, there are only three ways to remove such a brand uh, that don't involve self mutilation, because you have to literally cut the bone out of you to get rid of it. The first is to show your writ of freedom. And the order will remove the brand through the alchemical means. The second is to find a mage skilled enough to remove it without destroying your soul. And the third way is to die, for in death you are truly free. Now, if you were to die and come back to the resurrection, it will rebuild the symbol. This is literally tied to you. Oh. Are any of us ex slaves? Just asking. <laughs> Nope. Well, an ex-slave would be... That would require a very interesting background to have. Um, an escape <laughs> slave much easier to work with. The... Um, hmm, trying to think of uh, the other type of things that I have in the world. Oh, sorcerers are a bit interesting. A sorcerer that is um, working with the Empire... Well, they're quasi-slaves. They're not technically. They actually have a very high rank in society. 
the reason the Empire is basically has a decree that if anyone awakens as a sorcerer, they basically become forced into the military. Um, you can denote a sorcerer by their eyes. There's usually some form of a ring around their pupil that uh, gives a bit of a, um, a glow to it. I have a custom feat in the campaign setting that subdues this, unless somebody is actively studying your eyes. Um, it, it doesn't show. Um, the um, They have, effectively, they're referred to as falcons. And they have a jest that prevents them from calling upon their magic, unless the falconer gives the command for the magic to work. The reason being that this all occurred is because wild magic, uh, when it gets out of control, has been known to burn down cities. So, the Empire figured out the best way to control this was to put them all in one place and limit their ability to use magic unless they need them to. <laughs> Damn. So yeah, that is the basic gist of it. Uh, other stuff in the campaign will probably come up as we go along. There are other factions, such as um, the Vermin King and his Plague Knights, and um, other such people. But tonight we will see, and my world, as you can probably tell, is a bit of a dark fantasy setting. So hopefully you'll all have fun. I'm ready. I believe we will. Okay. Um, Pops is um, screen sharing. Oh, we have a tavern scene. Bear with me here. getting used to where everything is in this. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Allison's going to lay out the story for us and how, how we begin and everything and how we meet. Are, are we going to give a little backstory ahead of time or are we just rolling? Oh, I'm going to, uh, you're going to give your, you're going to start talking about your characters. I'm just placing you into the, uh, the scene in various places for you to begin and tell your story, who you are, and where you come from. Zephyr until he appears. Okay. You should be able to move your tokens pretty much anywhere uh, now that they're on the map. Um, How do I get to the map? Um, that's right. You're on the iPad. That makes things difficult because this is all done above VTT. Okay, so, so someone will just have to move me. Yep, just tell me where you want to be or um, anybody else and we can move you around the, the board. Gotcha. I can move you, so it's not that big of a deal either. But I'm putting you basically with Pops' character because you two, I think, know each other. Oh, we're at the bar. And you're back Maybe we shouldn't be at the bar then. We know each That's other. That's where we're I would be. be. I'm already... <laughs> I'm already <laughs> drinking. That's where I'd be. He's drinking zombies already. <laughs> like, you're drinking and I'm flipping weapons, so uh, we're ready. <laughs> Okay, then. So, let's start. We'll go in the order of people that are descending here. So, David, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, okay, my character is Torque. He is a half-orc barbarian. Uh, he has tan skin, stands about six foot four, 280 pounds. Um, he is currently sitting uh, by himself, um, but he seems to be watchful. Uh, throughout the environment. Um, he has a giant greatsword on his back, a spear, and some javelins. He's unarmored. Um, he appears to be from the Wildlands. Alright. The Wildlands? Oh, the 
Scourge lands. Well, you're you pure Scourge touched. Yes. Uh, the Scourge, well, they're raving lunatics and things. They don't really have a... You can't really be calm. People would recognize you as Scourge touched. So. Okay. He appears to have some human ancestry in him. He doesn't appear to be all Scourge. Nice. But he is sitting, sitting quietly, sipping on a mug of ale. Sounds good. All right, then. Nice. That would bring us to Lori. Okay. Uh, my character is a human variant rogue. Um, speaks both Dwarvish and Goblin, um, and is also a monster hunter and has seen some things. So ever since she was little, um, bad things seem to happen wherever she goes and uh, kind of internalized that and feels like the monsters inside as well. That uh, She also kills monsters, but she has no, like, has disassociated herself from the feelings, the emotions of others. So if you're dead, good for you, because now you don't have to feel anymore. Um, has some light armor, uh, likes to, to fight with a, a rapier and a um, short sword, or primary uh, weapons of choice. Pretty stealthy, um, obviously high on survival because she's been around and has been seeing some messed up things. Um, I, I would like to describe her as the epitome of resting bitch face. <laughs> she just uh, doesn't like people, will intimidate, will use deception, um, but also is a really, you know, ambitious rogue. She'll she'll take jobs that others won't because she doesn't care. You know what I mean? So she's kind of chaotic. She'll just take, you know, she doesn't, it doesn't matter who she kills. She just doesn't feel anymore. All right. Perfect person to have my back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am also sitting at the bar flipping a weapon. Uh -huh. Thinking and not talking. Mm -hmm. Shall I go next? Yes. Uh, oh, actually, the next person on the line is Chris. Okay. Chris. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll call him Seth Beer. Uh, that's just a name I've used for a long time. Former military, um, think of the rank equal, I would say, to sergeant when he left. Uh, sitting here at the bar because he just had a case from some noble woman who wanted to know if her husband was banging a square and um, <laughs> just spending what little money he earned getting drunk. That's where we're at. <laughs> Pretty simple. Works. I. My name is Ayrton. Er, Ayrton, yes, Ayrton. And uh, I grew up on the streets in a free city, and don't know who either of my parents are. I'm half elf. And I basically grew up on the street as a little rotten rogue, cut purse, stealing, thieving to eat, doing whatever. Um, eventually went up in the ranks, became a spy, and did, you know, did some pretty bad, nasty things. Mm -hmm. One of them nasty things led to me having my own knife stuck in my back. And an old druid found me and healed <laughs> me and taught me some uh, magic, and taught me, you know, some maybe better morals. And I'm just trying to be cool now. I ain't out to, you know, wreck governments or anything and I'm probably wanted everywhere but you know that's just the life of a rogue I'm sitting here hanging out with this youngster I met because I'm a half elf y'all I've been around for a little while I got some <laughs> decades behind me here um and you know I I kind of took a little shine to the to 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 this little rogue monster killer she I see a lot of myself in her but she was more than for the rest of the people, you know, like I learned, right? Okay, carry on. <laughs> that 
That's all I got. <laughs> that sounds good to me. All right. Well, it is a definitely late at night. You are on. Hmm. You are. Give me one second. Another large tavern in the Empire. We are not in the capital city, though. One second here. The next game will have a lot more stuff um, kind of planned out and things. It's always more fun to kind of generically set the stage, don't you? Well, you know. Part of this was part of this was um done very quickly, so mm-hmm. Oop, sorry, I clicked a button. So uh breaking things <laughs> on like, who are you hitting? Me. You're about to start a war <laughs> in the tavern. <laughs> well, you're right next to Pops, so stop it. Sorry, <laughs> Pops. <to> Pops. <laughs> mm. I'm just trying to figure out. I, I don't got him. Okay, there you go. So, um, so, so what are you Oh, drinking? I'm in the middle. What are you drinking? Nice. Nox? Nox, what are you drinking? Whatever you're buying for me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what they have that passes for tequila in this tavern. Tequila? Oh, yeah. You know me. It's got to be Ooh. from a cactus. It's got to be. Okay, I'll try it. But I won't say thank you. No. <coughs> That's okay. You know. I, I... All right, well, all of you have basically gathered in this tent ta- in this town. This is a rather large town. I'll hang out um, with her for a little while. She's not all evil. Yeah, this is going to be fun with my internet kicking me out every five minutes. Uh, hope I didn't yeah, that's kind of, that potentially could <laughs> suck. So. What the hell is it? What, Chris going over there starting trouble already? <laughs> hmm? Dude, Chris yeah, he's like, with the ball dude already. He's just gonna randomly punch somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to break everything and just be in a pain. So yeah. Okay. You're in the town of Brewbury. It's a large town. It's on the outskirt. It's on kind of the upper um, upper eastern upper western side of uh, the empire. You're relatively near the Goblin Highlands. That's one of the biggest uh, towns outside of the main city. And it has hmm, a uh, rather large tavern in it known as the Drunken Dragon, which is where you all are. You've all and, kind of course, of we're the only strangers in the place. Well, you've all kind of come here looking for um, work and other such things because you've heard of, well... There's a chance of making money around here. Mm. And basically, I just followed the monster hunter because she was looking for something to kill. Right? See, I figured I was following you because you promised <laughs> me there would be something to kill here. You must have come to me and said, hey, man, I need to kill something. I said, all right, let's go check something. Let's check I need to kill something new I haven't killed before. I'm bored. Oh, she has a specific goal. Here we go. I see. All right, so I brought her to this tavern where I know that there's probably some stuff going on from my days as a spy. That's why we're here. You've all heard of um, you've all, all of you have basically come here with the hopes of um, being able to make some cash because you know that yeah. there are there are um, I'm trying to think of the best way to kind of do this. Um, Mm. 
there are definitely jobs that can be had in this area. Um, contrary to what it looks like here, it is nighttime. And the place is going kind of well. There's so this crowd, there's lots of noise in the background. There is a songs playing and such. And um, it's a cold night when... I'm going to finish my mug uh, and move towards the bar uh, looking for a refill. Okay. That seat's taken. <laughs> uh, Unless you're buying me a drink. If you're going to buy me a drink, you can sit next to me. But other than that reason, no. I slide over. <laughs> Nothing. And I smile and I lean at the bar and uh, lift my mug to you. Uh, uh, where's mine? Little, little cash strapped at the moment. But, I need uh, a drink in this hand. I look over at your companion. She seems to need a drink. <laughs> Yeah, I just got her one. I need one. I have two hands. <laughs> I have two hands. So I only have one here, coin purse. I, I only have one coin pouch. Oh, you slid over. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> Resting bitch face. All right. so, I drink some more I tequila. Think... I watched you play with your dagger. More than likely, you're not drinking tequila. It could be a mead. might be a vodka. Tequila's not I'm just really. Drinking whatever, whatever Pops character bought me. Would you buy me Pops? Could be ale. <laughs> um, Pops likes liquor. Sorry, I mean. <laughs> right. Aaron, Aaron runs in higher circles. I mean, he ran in higher circles. You know, as a spy, he was. You know, he has a taste for the minor. Things. He has a palate that he likes to, yeah, enjoy. And if, okay. she's get, if she's drinking out of my coin pouch, she's drinking what I give her. <laughs> if you're going to sit there, you and if you have two, the other hand. If you have two hands, use one of them to mop the floor. Oh. Earn your money. You see oh. this weapon? I could put it down and have a drink in this hand, or I could put it in you and take your drink. Your choice. But could you put it in the bullseye? If you can, maybe I'll buy you one. The, I can do that. Where, where's the bullseye? Over there? There's two. There's basically two dartboards, and um, well, one of them has other things in it. No, throw it from down. Throw it. From, get out the way, dude. She's going to throw it from I'm going to throw it from the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go stand in the way and tell her throw it at the bullseye? Good job. Oh. Okay, so you're over there. Did that girl just walk in? Uh, yep, she is walking in. Okay. Oh, no, go ahead. Throw the dart. Throw, throw the knife. Throw the dagger. Throw it. Just throw it. Throw it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna throw the this dagger and hit the bullseye. Okay. Well, I, I, I want you to make an life. attack roll with the dagger because it's out of range right now. So you're going to roll with this advantage. Say. What uh, what dice do I need to roll? Okay, so if you go to your character sheet on your thing and you um, basically right-click on the... Um, oh, actually, if you're on the tablet. Um, yeah. I have, I have another roll... app that I have dice. Okay, well, you're going to want to roll a disadvantage because it's out of, it's, um, out of the, uh, the, the base range of the dagger right now because you're 30 feet away from the target. Your dagger has okay. a max range of 20. So roll the, dice, roll the d20 twice. The d20 twice? Yep, and take the lower roll. A one? Oh! That would be Ouch. a miss. The oh, dagger miss. goes wide. And what I mean by wide is it's in the Do ceiling. Do I hit the girl? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you more or less pick up the dagger and go, Foo! and the... Um, the bartender's like, Jesus Christ! What are you doing, you crazy woman? Don't do that in my bar! Go near I shrug the thing. and Don't... 
Do it here. Drink some more drink. <laughs> Guess you don't get one. Well, I have a drink already in my uh, in my other hand. Remember, I'm I'm looking for a second drink. So I have a drink. I have a ale from Pops, and uh, take a swig, shrug, turn around. <laughs> While this is happening, a little girl wanders into the bar. She kind of stumbles in. She's ragged, carrying a beat-up-looking doll, and uh, she's very pale. Her eyes are kind of... You can see them, but they're definitely blackened around the eyes. Black is in black and blue, or black is in sleepless? Black and blue. Like, no, you can see her eyes or her pupils and all that. It's just kind of like she's very baggy and... In the, okay. Okay. She wanders in, looks about, gives this little help me, and then falls over. Uh, I'm going to rush towards her. Yeah, I knew what you would, but... <laughs> I just look at from the bar and take a drink. I'm going to see if there's any wounds or... I was going to say, just what's going on, kid? Uh, she is out like a light. Now, if I want to do... Because I took a whole bunch of stuff for an um, investigation. kind of, How would I check for that kind of stuff? Uh, well, Again, I've never used this before. Okay. Well, what are you trying to do? Um, basically just see if anything's wrong. Is this, is this person dead or just... She's not dead. You can tell that she's still breathing. Uh, okay. She's just uh, very out of it, very groggy. She's not very conscious. It looks like she kind of stumbled in here. My character yells from the bar, get her a drink, you dimwits. <laughs> I'd take a quick glance outside, see if anything else is out there. But... <coughs> nope. Just the town itself. I want to do a medicine this town, check. This, this tavern is relatively close to the gates, so. You want to do a medicine check, Dave? Yes, I'd like to roll a medicine check. Roll it for me. 14. She is absolutely exhausted. Okay. Um, I am going to gently lift her. Okay. And bring her to a quiet table over to the side. Yeah. How, okay. how the, um, the bar keeps kind of looking around and he calls over to one of the maids and says, Bring her into the back room. And um, the maid uh, kind of moves this guy out of the way and she opens this area and is going to set a place where you can do this. Okay. Okay. So that should appear on there. If you scroll down a little bit, Pops, everybody can yep. see the map. All right. I will carry her there. And as I'm carrying her, I will ask for some water. Yeah. He, uh, the barkeep come, comes out. Uh, the wrong thing. Barkeep comes like over to here and uh, gives some water. The maid comes over, grabs it, and does the thing. But yeah, so they basically she opens up like this door here, and there's a couple of beds in here and stuff, and you can put the girl in there. So y'all just leave the girl laying up there, and y'all walk over to the room. That's cool. As hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm, well, I'm not. I might not be able to move it. I came can back. Can you move me outside the door? <laughs> I'm going to move to outside the door. Okay. Let's move your character. Oh, I'll take care of that. I keep forgetting you don't you. have the, the you, thing. You're doing what? You're doing I'm what? I'm going to go stand outside the door. I'm not going to go in and I'm not going to talk to them. I'm just going to stand outside the door because I want to hear. Man, I thought we was going to get away with not having to worry about this little kid, but I. You told me there was money. There could be money with this. Let's go. Uh, this kid doesn't look like she had a coin purse, but okay. Do you think? Someone's got to be looking for this small child. She'll just wander in. I don't know. Does she have any marks on her face? She's showing off. Uh, no. You wouldn't know. She's showing nope. Nothing on I her face or anything. She's um, looking for this child. I bet you. I'm going to try to get her to drink. 
Okay. Chug, chug, mm -hmm. chug. Oh. Pour a bit into her mouth. She said she's groggy. Um, she's not... It looks like she just really needs to sleep. You're able to get her to get a few sips, though, which does help. What is your name, child? What you doing, Rock? Hmm? Oh, Rocky said hi, everybody. Yay, hey, Rocky. Oh. What's up, dude? <laughs> Press that. Oh. I know. Oh. Her name is... She's kind of squawks out um, softly. Rin. Rin? Rin. R-I-N. Uh, okay. Thank you. Man, she wakes up that door. That that that, that half orc's going to scare her to death. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to make a persuasion check to try to convince her that she is safe. Uh, okay. Well, she's very out of it. Um, roll. Oh, thank God I rolled well. Um, otherwise, I would have scared her to death. <laughs> uh, 14. Yeah, you think that she's um, doing a little bit better? Okay. I'm going to sit on the bed and just keep an eye on her. I'm going to knock on the door. So I'm going to sit over here and drink. The, I'm um, knocking on the door. The, the maid's kind of looking in and she's like, you can come in, miss. I come in and sit in the corner. I don't talk. Mm -hmm. The maid steps out and yeah, you can go and sit in the corner. I don't know if that's the corner you wanted, but I put that there. It doesn't matter. Just take corner. <laughs> Drinking no thing pops. Let's see how it is. Drinking uh, and drink putting weapons in the corner. <laughs> so I'm just sitting here, like, facing the door at the bar and kind of, like, just keeping an eye on everything because all I see is a bunch of commoners. And, yep. and, you know, I don't see any threats, so I'm just kind of keeping down trust. Yeah, I figure they got this. Uh, I'll wait till my until I get back to my office and get my next job. And other than that, nothing seems to be getting, you know, that I need to care about. Okay. Well, after about an hour or so, the girl stirs a bit. And... <clears throat> When she, I, move uh, to I her walk side. over and pour my drink on her. <laughs> hey, I oh. spent money on that. <laughs> I don't care. Okay, so you're gonna come in and dump your drink on her. There's, yeah, there's, there's a freaking up anyway. glass of water right there. You could have thrown that. On her. I mean, <laughs> so you're dumping alcohol on the kid. Okay, yeah. she gets a bit scared of this and doesn't really know how to react. I say winky, oh. winky, eggs and bakey. <laughs> What's your name? Okay. <laughs> her name is Ren. I know she's, this, but I wanted her to tell me. She's just kind of looking at you um, with definitely looks that could kill. Nice. Now you pissed the little I say, I know that look. I own that look. Where are you from? Villages. Which About ones? A half day's travel south. Is there a monster there? There's something there. I don't know what it is. Oh, monster. It, straight to the point. Now, how it, do you feel? Are you okay, little girl? Hey, where's the monster? <laughs> I don't care how she feels. <laughs> this is who my so, character is. Remember, you're better off dead. I don't care about you. Where's the monster? Um, they killed everyone. How? Don't know. Describe the people. Describe the bodies. 
Good. Remember all them dead bodies? <laughs> what did she say? What did she say? She describes the bodies as dead. <laughs> Were they stabbed? Were they suffocated? Were they disembodied? Was it eaten? Are they missing it their just, eyeballs? Can you please go into detail? It just came and then they were screaming and they died. Did you see the monster? It was like a shadow. Just a shadow? It was fast. Can I take a closer look at her eyes? Yep. Do I need to roll anything? Uh, what do you want to do? I don't know how to play exactly. I just want to. I want to take a closer look at her eyes and see if there's anything notable. Okay. Um, make a investigation check. A what check? Investigation. Investigation. Yep. How do I do that? Uh, you should have a skill. That's investigation. I do. Uh, yep. You can either just tap that or roll a d20 and add your skill bonus to it. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to roll a d20. So I rolled a 16 and then I have a uh, plus 3, so I have 19. 19. Okay. Well, that's definitely enough. Um, you... Hmm. You notice that her she is extremely exhausted, um, still, and she's uh, she looks kind of like you do when you look at things. She's definitely seen something that you know she's seen a lot. Are her eyes themselves intact, or is there any? Well, the eyes are intact. The eyes, the eyes are, or... the eyes are okay. fine she from what just, you can tell. She just looks haunted. Yes. Hmm. Which, I'm going to ask Ren, which way to your town, your village? She says it's south of here. Half a day's travel. It's, okay, uh... I'm going to go back out to the bar. It's the, um, Lugdush Lug is the name of the place. Lugdush? Lugdush. L-U-G-D-U-S-H. All right. I am going to go back out and sit next to Pops. Okay. And I'm going to tell him I need another drink. Pops, what's your? Oh, is he there? Where'd he go? I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay, I was gonna say. What is your name? Arin Arton. 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 Oh, Arton. I, God dang it. Arton, not Arin. Oops. I'm gonna say Arton. I need another drink. Uh, yeah, I'll take. Yeah, we need another drink. We're going to Lugdush. We're going to Lugdush. What's in Lugdush? There's a monster. A monster, a shadow monster. A shadow monster. What do you know about there's, shadow monsters, young girl? I don't know, but there's we gotta kill it, and um, I'm sure there's money in it. If it's killing people, we need to get rid of it. I'm sure. I'm that. just gonna let you know a little something, a little something. If we're going after something we don't know about. We may need smell. May need what? Smell. We may need. We may need a little muscle on this one. Listen, you get me a drink, uh, and you can go make friends. We both know that that's not my forte. Friends? Who said anything about friends? I don't even know if you. Uh, I don't even know if you consider me a friend. Listen, we don't have to play games. I'm just saying we might need more fire power. <laughs> right. Right. Let's like I friends. said, I'm gonna. You get me a drink, and you can find the cannon fodder, and we'll go from there. Oh, I'm not looking for cannon fodder. I'm looking for people that can actually help us. Everybody you know, dies. Accomplish this uh, 
I don't like dying. I don't like the prospect of it. There's no profit in it. Um, you know, I didn't make it this far by being stupid. Half the world wants to kill me. Remember that. Just remember that. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so, uh, what do those other guys think about it? Are they still talking to her? What did you find out? What? Uh, she just looks... How do I say? Like you? She looks like me. Hmm. All right. Uh, the least I can do is go figure it out. The half orc look like he give a shit? What? Yeah, he actually looked pretty concerned with the girl. Like he was actually going to help her. I don't care. I poured my drink right on her face. Uh, Zardy took. We, we sat there for what an hour and stared at each other and said nothing. I just wanted her to get it out so I could figure out what to do. Well, she was. But he, he looks like. I know, but. Lottie freaking da. I got time. I guess I could have gone back out and drink, but I would have missed what she had to say. So yeah, the work looks like he cares, but. I don't know. Right, well, this, this other dude looked like he cared too, but he just like kind of passed out at the bar. I don't know. That guy? Yeah. The one that made me throw yeah. a weapon and didn't believe I could do it? Yeah, that guy. He just kind of fell asleep over there. So. Look how poke him. <laughs> um, nah, let's just let him sleep it off. Let's see if we can recruit. Uh, you want see me to we pour a drink on his apple. head too? Because I can do that. Let's see if we can recruit the apple. Why don't you go buy him a drink? Here's some money. Oh, you go buy him a drink. No, here's some money. Go buy him a drink. Where is he? At the end of the bar over there by the door. I'm guarding the door over there. I buy a drink from the bartender. What do orcs like? Um, They generally will drink whatever. He said he was drinking meat or ale or something. Mm. Give me some mead. A tall I'm, one. I'm gonna hand the 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 maid two gold pieces. I'm gonna tell her keep her safe, keep her fed, keep her comfortable. If anything happens, I'm coming back. How far? How far to Lugdush? About a day about a half a day's walk. Thank you. And I'm going to head towards the door, and I'm going to announce, I'm going to Lugdush. Is anyone coming? I chased after him with this mug of meat and said, stop, dummy. We got to talk. <laughs> stop, dummy. <laughs> oh, we're definitely going to have to teach this youngster some etiquette eventually. But um, I do it your way. <laughs> I take the, the mug from your hand. And I down it in one big swill. Set the cup on a table and say, let's go. Did we lose Chris? Yeah. That's why yes. Oh, yeah, we did. At the bar. Um, he fell asleep He's at the bar. He, at the bar. He's going to have to be the only one in the party with the horse, and he'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, did, he have to, did he have to step away, was it, or anything? Or yeah, just... he said, he said uh, something came up. Oh, I, I, see it. I see it. Yep. Okay. So he can passed find out. Us later. He'd catch up to us. You know, I um, whistle at um, Art. You what? I, I whistle like at you. <laughs> like I can't hear. Let's like I go. can't hear the half orc bellowing across the bar. What? what? Don't matter. You whistle at me like I'm your pup, 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 me dog. You can roll your eyes and give me attitude, and I just don't care. Youngster. You want to go? Youngsters. What's your name, half orc? What's your name, orc? You can call me Torque. What's up, Torque? I mean, hi, Torque. My name is Ayrton. I didn't catch your name. Knox. The, the rotten one next to me's name is Knox. <laughs> Don't worry, though. You'll get used to her. She rubs off on you. Um, you have got so. to investigate. Because that's kind of what we were just talking about. Is there gold involved? <laughs> Is there gold? I raise an eyebrow with that. 
It doesn't like, matter. I'll, I'll kill I'm it anyway. Behind, I'm behind her shaking my head, bro. I get it. You know, it's like. <laughs> I'll kill it anyway. That's what I do. I just wanted She's to make young. sure I got paid. Don't do anything for free that you're good at. Have, have patience, Tark. She's young, but she's supposedly good at what she does. <laughs> I, I step over to the bar and I put a gold piece on the bar and say, is that enough for now? Oh, look, he's paying you to go along. Look. I pick up the gold and I say, thank you. And that's the only time you'll ever hear me say that. <laughs> you get Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I dropped some coins on the bar to pay for my drinks and uh, just kind of start heading toward the door. Like, you know, I, let's go and do this. <sighs> I'll head toward the door. I guess I'll come too. <laughs> hey, barkeep. When, when when Junior over there wakes up, tell him we went to Lugbush. It gives you a It's called Lugdush. Up. He gives you a thumbs up. All right, cool. Dungeon Master, will you move me, please? I am no. stuck. Oh. <laughs> Just get there and drink. We're going to go handle this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be changing the scene in a second anyway. So. Oh, okay, don't yeah. matter. Where are we going? Lugmush. Lugdush. I don't care. <laughs> you do a whole lot of not caring. Starts with an L. Yep. Right, let's go. Um, see, this this is the whole thing. Tar is like, she's a youngster. She, she she just don't she don't know yet. I right, she'll learn. Okay. So you're per, you basically you travel for about half a day, and you're getting there in the afternoon. Um, actually, about you're getting there shortly before dawn. And, uh, the map isn't loading. Oh no, it's loaded. I just have most of it fogged out. So. Oh, we're at the top. <laughs> we can't see it. I see. Yep. yep. So we well, are... let's see what we got here. Can we take a look from where we are? Can we see into the town yep. without going in the town? Yep. I'm giving you guys some areas that you can see. I am drawing my great sword. As I start to see buildings. Hmm. Yes, the place is um, definitely a bit of a wreck. Something happened here. I'm going to stand behind the orc. <laughs> but I'm going to peek around to take a look. I want to see if there's anything. There's a building I can see. Yep, that's about what you see right now. Uh, Could we look at the damage mm -hmm. to the building? Yep. Places, uh, let's see. I want to, that. I think you're used to switching between things so I can move things on the screen. But if you wanted to come, like, over here, you can definitely tell that this place has been wrecked. And there are footprints everywhere. What, what, uh, what kind of footprints? Uh, you can make a survival check if you'd like. Survival yeah, check? Plus five survival. Roll a 20 and add your modifier. Uh, wow, uh, I rolled a 20. Uh, survival plus three, I got a 23. Excellent. So you're looking down at this and you're like, all right, well, these are kind of booted. Then you see like a couple of them that are kind of barefoot. But as you're looking at like these aren't like the way a per these they look human than the the way the the tracks are and stuff but when you're looking at them you're like 
these are shamblic. They're not a um, uh, like a regular a person's cage. stance. Yeah. And so you see them. them. There's a lot of them. Probably at least ten. What direction do they head, Knox? They're kind of all over the place. I don't know. They look With like a the hot mess. With the twenty-three, you can you can kind of tell that they seem to be conjugating and going south. Um, probably we came to from the, the north. South. Yeah, you came from the north, so okay, they so seem to be headed more to the there. southwest. And you start to hear like a moaning sound. I draw my weapon. And a couple of zombies wander into the area over here. Nice! We got zombies! Um, look, guys, I'm not waiting to see what these things do. Um, uh, I don't think any of you would. So this is going to be an issue. All right. So... For initiative, you want to roll a d20 and add your initiative modifier to it. Cool. Oh. <laughs> initiative. Where's my initiative one? How do I know? Should be up top, just below your abilities. There it is. I rolled a B. What the heck is a B? That is a natural 20. Okay, so I got 20 more. Uh, I got a 21. <laughs> Rogues are fast, baby. I'm just saying. So what does that do? Do we fight? Uh, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna build the initiative thing in a second. I'm just getting the... Oh, okay, um, I'm sorry. Don't me to jump the gun. No worries. I haven't run a game for a bit, so just getting a little used to it. And you got a 21, you said, Lori? Yes. Box is on. Okay. Ooh, that thing's going quick. Okay, so if you open the combat tracker in the top um, left corner there, Pops, mm -hmm. that shows the initiative order and what round we're on. Okay. All right, then. So. So uh, I'm going to pull out the old trusty quarter staff. I'm going to okay. step here. Okay, to that square. Make an attack roll. And I'm going to smack, dude. And it has a. Uh, Probably want to be a bludgeoning. Right yep, does bludgeoning damage. So. I know that I have that. Four. And, well, a. You need to first roll to hit. <laughs> mm. 
So you want to hit the um, yeah, you want to hit your base. Okay. The base roll. All right. That's a four. That would be it. That would be a seven, which okay. I believe is close, but no cigar. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, A second. Yeah, you um, you do actually hit it, but you don't do any damage to it. Okay. So I got its attention, yo. Woohoo! Definitely got its attention. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, next is I'll come down here, back one of these, so they're not both about to kick my ass. Come on, come on. Show me what Where you got. Where am I? Well, who's next? You were up. You were, you were actually next. And you are okay. up by um, our wonderful half work. How far away am I from the zombies? Like you 20. Are 20 feet. You can move can 30. I, okay. Can I move? Mm. Now, if you go to move in your character, if you move to this one and attack that one, uh, you would potentially get your sneak attack damage on it if you hit. I don't want to do that, though. I want to throw daggers. Okay. You can throw a dagger as well. Uh, if you're 20 feet, you are in range of it. So you can throw your dagger at it, and you'll still get your sneak attack modifier. Okay. I'll do that. So what, uh, what kind of dice do I need to roll? A roll a d20. Roll a d20. I got a three. God damn it. Now add your bonus. Which uh, be your dexterity plus your proficiency modifier. So I got a plus three dexterity and then which modifier? Your proficiency modifier, which is probably a plus two. Yep. Oh wait, I have a sixteen dexterity plus three. Is that what you're saying? So it's plus three. Yep, and then you have a proficiency modifier. So if right you look in your the, character sheet. Yeah, right below the character right below the it will actually be on if plus you're looking two. at the full screen. Okay, so that's plus five. Now you rolled a three, right? Yes. Okay, so plus five is an eight. That hits them. You may roll damage. That will be a d4 plus your dexterity modifier and a d6 because you have an ally within five feet. Okay, so total roll is five and then add what? A D6 to it. I did that. I did the two, the two rolls, and then what okay. you said I added something else. Add your add your dexterity bonus to it. So three. So three. So you so rolled eight. what was the total one? Eight points of damage? It's eight. Yeah. Okay. Give me a second here. Okay. Bear with me. I'm just figuring out how to mark it. Mm. There we go. So you did eight points of damage? Yes. I think so. Okay. That's fine. All right, it takes some damage, shambles a little bit. All right, this zombie moves to here and wants to eat Pops' brains. Gonna go for, it's gonna go for, um, who is it? Artem. And that is not the character I wanted. Does a 21 hit you? Um, I have a 12 armor class. So I'll be a yes. Yeah. Oh, does max damage of 7 damage. Yeah. 
Mm, brain pops. Hey, Artsy. Good to see you. So did Artin take damage? Oh yeah, here you got messed up. Oh, yeah. And there you go, there you go. Over there, dummy. <laughs> Artin, right. you damn went. Why are you so close to the zombies? Because I didn't try to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. Don't worry, your orc friend will save you. Thanks, no pressure. Mm. Okay, something else does something on this. Oh, this turn. I had Twelve armor class and nine hit points. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm laying out. I'm still insulting you on the ground. Uh, something that um, most people's passive perceptions. Mine is passive perception. Yep. Be in the corner of your sheet. I'll have like your passive investigation, your passive. Um, Mine, mine's like thirteen, eight. but I'm asleep, so. Passive wisdom. Thirteen plus three. It? Mine is thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, uh, passive perception. I have eighteen. You would. Uh, you have the highest. Um, all right. So, and, and you, the other two of you both have thirteens. You said. Yes. I have that 13. is enough to something. That's sixteen. Mo something moved um, down towards the bottom. If you notice, there's another token down there. Yeah, there's more. It was quick. And ghostly. Yeah. It's the shadow. Yeah, we can't get past right. this. <laughs> Orc, you got to get him. Hit him with your greatsword. See what it does. Take its head, man. You can do it. So, now the, the next fun one goes. Ooh, that's not good. Pops is going to take another six points of damage. Oh. This is your fault, you stupid orc. We should have stayed in the tavern and talked about it, but you had to go rushing out the door. Now my buddy is zombie food. You took the gold. What are you going to do I'm about fairly it? And I'm fairly certain that um, you drop at that point, Pops. Well, I only had nine hit points. The first guy right. down there killed me. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, so now we're up to hmm, a wonderful half work. Park. All your right. Choice? I'm charging oh. down between the two. Okay. And I am going to attack the first. Are you going to rage? I saw. I saw the ghost moving. Correct. Yes, I will use my bonus action to rage. Excellent. Let me make an attack roll. All right. Ooh, nat 20. Well, that hits. 25. Okay. And double it. All right. <laughs> Adrian with ah, oh, first level combat. Uh, 18 plus my rage is plus two, so 20 points of damage. 20 points of damage. Now, were you going for the wounded one or the fresh one? Uh, the wounded one. That was the one with the, the first on initiative, correct? Uh, it was a second on initiative, but it's... Uh, oh. I took... I, I, I hit with we hit like daggers. All right. The one she hit with daggers. Yes, that is the one yep, I'm attacking. That's the one. Sorry. Okay. So that that's good. One second. 
So you just said you did 20 points of damage? Correct. You killed it. Good job. Did. I have to check something. Sure. Yep, critical hit. I thought so. Yeah, you bisect it into two pieces. And um, it drops quite dead. We'll go to the top of the order. Pops, roll a d20 for me. Shit. Oh. I have a little button that says heal. Am I trying to heal myself? What? No, you're trying to make a death save. A so you want to make a death save throw. Right. Okay, I was going to say, Please. is he rolling to see if he's going to reanimate because um, so bring out to your kill him too? Or, yeah, bring out your full sheet so you can see everything. And yeah, hit, yeah, hit the toggle sheet size. Okay, so you should be as you hit. You should be at the. Uh, you should be down. So you want to make sure you're, you you want to take the damage. Just so hit the nine damage at the top. Just take that away. <laughs> well, you can do it there, or if you look, there's a little area you can put it in where you can just put in nine oh, and then. There. Okay. Yeah. Then hit damage. Damage. Because you're only down to there. So now that you're there, click on where it says death saves. Who's on name? It won't or let me death click. Saves? Mostly dead. Mostly. Uh, it won't let me click on it. Okay, well, you're just going to roll a d20 anyway. So, there we go. This is what I wanted to see. Um, so yeah, roll a d20. You can do that from down below. Um, where? That's what I mean. Where the, where's the oh, dice rollers at? Go back to the chat box. Uh, that one? And see the D20 right down there at the bottom? Which there you one? Go. That one. Okay. That one. Yeah, click that, and then hit roll in the corner. The left corner. Thirteen. That is a save. No. So you save. That means you, save. you do not slip closer to death. I'll be right back. I need to run to the bathroom real quick. Okay. So I'm not dead. Not Ooh. yet. Then get up. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, you do realize you ran towards zombies, dude. Yeah, I'm trying to kill them, up, man. You know, baby. But there's two of them. Don't you have yeah. ranged attacks? Mm, I have a couple of really weak spells. We are level one. You know. <laughs> Which is why you don't put yourself next to a monster at level one. You stand behind the orc with the great sword. That's what you do. Yeah, well, that's what you did. It is what I did. <laughs> I'm still alive. Spellcasters you, call anyone with swords shields. Uh, anyone with guts. I just have got no guts. <laughs> Anyone with more hit care. points, actually. Right. This is me who just doesn't care. <laughs> I do have a root spell, so uh, this time I think I'll root that other sucker and get out the way. What do you think? That's a good idea. So he can't run after us? I mean, well, if I'm allowed to do anything else, I don't even know. I don't know if that was your turn or not. Because um, I'm next, right? Yeah. You, you get three... Death saves. If you make two, then you're stabilized and you're not going to die. If you fail to, um, you die. You die. Uh, so I got to roll two more times. Lay in there. Uh, one more time. If you made you made the first one. Okay. Okay. So I'm still laying there. Okay. I can't even crawl away. Okay. Correct. <sighs> mm hmm. But the good news is the zombies are less likely to hit you when you're you're unconscious. Knox, somebody else better get his attention. I like my brains where they're at, right? Right? Mm, I'll do it myself. Okay. Now, the way death saves work, as Dave was saying, you actually have to make three death saves. You either have to save three times or fail three times. 
if you roll a natural 20 on your death save, you stabilize immediately. If you roll a 1, it counts as two failures. Ouch. So, so far I have one success. One success. Oh, all right. Now then, since hmm, Pops has failed his, uh, has made his first death save, so he is one step closer to stabilizing. So if you succeed two more times, you're stabilized, or you're rolling that 20. Okay. And you basically have to get a 10 or better. So you got a 50. And what does a, a medicine check do? Is that a, a bonus to it will a save? It will, it, will save, it will stabilize them. Okay. If a messenger, if you basically say I, I bind the wounds out of combat, you just do it. Because there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing it. If you yep. take your action to stabilize him, then that would be your action for the turn you have to roll. It's not a hard roll, though. If you have a medicine kit, it's pretty much automatic. Okay. All right. I do not that have a medicine us. kit, but... Hmm, that will lead us to not. I, I got a plus three to medicine, too. So, Nox, what are you doing? There's one zombie left. The other one is, um, um well, covering. The other one's dead, right? Um, yeah, the other one is, uh, has parts covering your buddy. Gross. Um, I'm going to move within five feet and I'm going to attack with my rapier and use my bonus action of the short short. So, I'm going to do a one two combo and knife this sucker to death because someone's got to do it. All right, then roll the hit. D20, right? Yep. Fuck. I rolled a two. Now add your bonuses. Uh, where am I adding? Tell me again. I'm not going to have a, yet. You should have a plus five. For a rapier is plus five and the short sword is plus five. Right. So two plus five is so seven. That, that hits the zombie, but you do not break through its toughened skin. What about the, the short sword? Roll again. Roll again. 17, and then the short sword is 5. That, that hits. It's quite well. So just roll a d6. Now it's within 5 feet in the opponent, so you may add your sneak attack die, which is another d6. You do not add a bonus because this is an offhand attack. Okay, so total is six. Six total? Okay. And then what's my sneak attack? Uh, D6. I don't have anything. I don't, yeah, okay, so it's, that's it, so six. Okay. Oops. A little bit of damage. Okay. It's turn. Well, it just got hit by you, so it's going to attack you. Zombies aren't that bright. This is true. Does an 18 hit you? An 18? Mm -hmm. You want to look at your armor class, where it says AC. Armor is 14. So it does hit. Well, only does two points of damage. Okay. You don't run up to him and let him hit you. Shut up, corpse. No one asked your opinion. <laughs> Even in my death throes, I'm laughing at my young charge. I don't recall who's on the ground and who's standing. Please remind me. He's only mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> Still talking. <laughs> can I poke Pops with my foot? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, I can take take Pops. you to hell with okay. me. Oh. The specter moves in and appears there. It has this raggedy kind of appearance, uh, purplish mist kind of in the air. Uh, has a raspy voice 
and it um, calls out at you, um, at you all, that uh, soon you too will be in service of the Wraith Queen. Be up my ass. <laughs> It goes for it goes for the big guy. Of course. Uh, oh, uh, I don't think an eight hits you though. An eight does not hit. Me. That's probably good. Yeah, right. that's probably good. That, that's very good. The other zombie continues to bleed. Very good. And that would bring us to Tark. All right. Um, I am going to. This zombie was injured by Knox, correct? Yeah. Uh, yep. The zombie. Okay. Um, if you let's make sure you click the zombie when you're going to go to attack, because I think that will apply everything to it. Okay. Oh. All right. Let me see. Uh, Do we know how much? How much? Uh, how many hit points the zombie has left? Um, it's looking chunky. Alright, I am going to try to kill the zombie before turning my attention to the specter since the specter is attacking. Mm -hmm. In hopes that it does not attack Nox. Shh. A nine. A nine. Hit. A nine. Huh? Well, you squarely hit it. Alright. And I do uh, mm, ten. Six, seven, 10 plus 2, 12, points, 12 of damage points of damage in my rage. Huh. Rock is unimpressed by your damage. <laughs> it is barely there. But it's still up. Okay. Damn it. Okay. Um, pops. Actually, um, sunlight begins to break through at the end of the turn, and the specter is starting to actually look a little afraid. Oh, Goes good. Pop around. With sunlight. Harton, roll me another death save. Oh, that is a fail. So mark oh. one. Failure. So close. Nox, that would be your turn. Uh, shit. Can I position myself behind the orc and still hit the zombie? Um... You could, but you would take an opportunity attack from the specter. I want to be between... Okay, so I want the specter, and then the orc, and then me. So I want the orc between me and the specter, where I can still hit the zombie. You would have to disengage. That would utilize your action to, to avoid an attack that. from the specter. If, Is there if any way just... that I can not get hit by the specter possibly you would, ha you would have to forego your action to move i think it might be worth it to disengage and get behind me i was gonna say or should i just fucking hit the specter and see what happens um I'm ready. Well, the zombie is barely there so right there's that. I'm just saying, like he's not much of a threat at this point, but there's two of them. So do I remove the zombie or do I get disengage and get behind you? You know the specter is more dangerous, but you also know that with the sun rising, the specter isn't going to be here very long because they are highly sensitive to the light. So it will okay, need I'm to seek cover very quickly. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. You're going to move. So you're going to disengage and move. Yes, I'm going right. to... So you've initiated a disengage, so that basically lets you get to here. And, um... Yes. 
Can I do anything? That way, is it still attack? No, you cannot attack. You've utilized your action to do that. At second level, you'll get an ability called Cunning Action, where you can use your bonus action to disengage. But you can't okay. do it now. Oh. Something rogues get. So then I'm done, right? My turn is done? You are done. All right. That will lead us to the dead orc. Or the, I'm sorry, the dead orc. What? Dead zombie. Well, he's keeping us alive, the zombie. The, the, specter, the dead zombie. The specter is also going to disengage. And it goes in six cover in the house. Okay, Tark, get that zombie. All right. You could probably sneeze on it and it would be done. Well, the zombie goes next. And it didn't like getting hit by big, big orc of doom. 19. That hits. Okay. It does three points of damage, which you have. And I take half damage. Uh, I'm resistant to all rage. You do. It does one. All right. One point. And that will lead us to your turn. All right. I'm going to try to chop it in half. Uh, 22 I hit. That's too high. <laughs> you can roll damage. Not a natural 20, but still. And I do 13 points of damage. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Five points of damage taken. Okay, fun. So it needs to do that. Yeah. It's uh quite dead. All righty. Yeah. Now then. Is anyone going to help Pops? Now, are you going to allow yourselves to drop out of combat? Didn't I already do that? No, you you moved. You didn't. Uh, okay. You're still in initiative right now. But if you allow yourselves to end combat, you can just stabilize pops. There's no roll will be required. I am going to go in the house and see if I can find the wraith or the specter. Um, Definitely a specter. Wraith. A spec I would have killed the entire party like um, that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. CR5 uh, monster, two, three first level characters. Yeah. And ask fair. Nox to heal uh, Air. You air, want me to heal this? Person. Okay. Person? So, well, are you going to stabilize Pops? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Well, you're still you're still in the. Um, I'm actually I'm going to allow it to drop out of combat at this point. Because, okay. Um, basically, you're moving to go and try to look around and stuff, and the specter is uh, moving through the house. It's got a lot of move. Um, okay. Oh, and it's going to want to be someplace dark. So, hmm. Pops, you are stabilized. Don't say I never did anything for you. <laughs> So you can click the stabilize button on your character sheet. It should be. You click on that death saving throw area, the failure success area thing. There we go. Um, hit the three successes. There we go. And that stabilizes you. Um, 
Do me a favor, uh, Nox, make a medicine check for me. Medicine check? What do I need to roll? D20. Then add your add your medicine bonus for your skill. It might rolled, just be your wisdom. I rolled a 20, and it's just a plus one, so 21. 21. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Ops, gain back. Um, gain back. Oh, 20. So was that a nat 20? It was. It was a nat 20. No, gain back. Gain back four hit points. Only four? Yeah, only okay. four. They're not it's a healer. perfect. <laughs> Oh, I was going to give you one, course. but it was a nat 20. So, yep. <laughs> now, if you have healing magic and memory, you can heal yourself. I do have heal. I do have a heal. Is it my turn? You can, yeah, you're out of combat, so you can do whatever at this point. Bam, and then there it is. Then over to what um, Dave sees. Martin, you owe me a drink. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She actually, she doesn't get those anyway. Now, did, you, did you cast your healing That's spell? Really yes, all I it, was, about. it took me all the way up to nine. So, oh, fantastic! Yeah. I didn't see the roll. So. Yeah, it it took me all the way up to nine. I just clicked on the button, the heal button okay. right there. Bang! Oh, I see what you did. You you healed. You did that. Nah, not a big deal. Um, okay. Is that not what I was supposed to do? That's <laughs> not. You're, you're supposed to. You're supposed to like use one of your spells, which if you go to your spells on your sheet, if you have like the cure wound spell. I don't think I have any heals. That's what I mean. It was like I was thinking as a rogue. Right, go, go up to where it says spells. I got charm, entangle, fog cloud, thunder wave. Okay, well, um, knock yourself back down to four hit points then, because you don't have any healing. <laughs> You had healing magic in He's memory. a true rogue. He just cheats in the game. <laughs> I told you, I was a rogue druid. Okay. Also, what I what I recommend you do on the uh, if you go into combat again, cast your shillelagh spell before you attack. Well, see, I didn't realize I had a bonus. No, I everybody has. That. Everybody potentially has a bonus action, so don't worry. I didn't I'll, I'll explain as we go. So, yeah, once you have the shillelagh spell, you become very dangerous. And, yep, Rocket is in camera. Meow, meow. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's oh. a little pain in the ass. Let's see. He's hungry and yeah. wants food. And I'm running D&D. Tough shit. Okay, so. Ha, got you. Oh, shit, I'm trying to go for my hair. Over there. <sighs> All right. So, Tark goes and takes a look into the um, into the house. You can make an investigation check for me. Oh, not my strong actually, suit. Right here goes. Actually, Ooh. perception. 18, 19 minus 1. 19 minus 1. Wow, that's not bad. Okay. You Who's getting one? rolls? I wish I was getting rolls. <laughs> the dice are liking me today. Well, someone. Let's see Okay. Now, the first thing you notice is that, um, like, you look around, and a lot of this area, since it's been heavily hit by, um, I assume you're kind of like down over here looking, because uh, this is where it went. This whole like ground floor and all that, a lot of it's exposed to what where the light's going to be able to get in here. So it's going to be a lot of sunlight in here. You don't okay. see it on this floor. Um, you do. What you do spot though is um, there is a destroyed staircase that leads to a second level, um, and a um, oh, is it, there is a. A trap door that's closed on the floor that probably goes to a root cellar. Okay. Um, you did notice this thing can fly, so and it's incorporeal, so it can go through the it can go through the um, 
the ceiling and all that. But it could also go through the, um, the floor. I'm going to open the trap door. Okay. This guy, yeah, don't even wait for bad. Not by yourself, you. dude. We can't help you. <laughs> you do realize that we're both rogues and we should probably be in there looking around. <laughs> you should wait for us. I got high stealth, high deception, high well, investigation, and perception. You might want to wait for me because this is how I roll. You, were, <laughs> you happen to be fixing um, your cohort. I'm fixing pops while this orc just muscles on ahead thinking he's going to solve all the world's problems. Well, that Without is here. right. The zombies? I'd say so. Mm -hmm. He killed all the zombies because he's a big oaf, but when it comes to sneaking around and finding things, that's kind of what we do. Oh, I'm not sneaking around. I know oh, you're not, which is... He is uh, definitely not, not sneaking around. <laughs> Yeah, we get it. All right, all right. Do you think, dude? We'll be out here getting better. <laughs> <laughs> You're in there getting worse. <laughs> okay. So you look around, and by this point, the group can join you. So I'm just going to move you guys kind of down over here. And I'm going to yell at this orc for being loud. What are you doing? Um. I got Shut this up. room. There might be people in here. I, you don't I see got, any. I, I got this little buff called Guidance. Should I cast that? Sure. Gives a d4 to a um to the next skill check roll for the person. Uh, you just say you cast it. Don't worry about it. It's a cantrip. Okay. I cast it. There it is. You can do it at will. So. So, who do you cast it on? I'm casting it on the orc because he ain't paying attention. Right? So, you open the trap door, you said? Yes. Okay, so make a perception check. And you kind of look down there, and you can add a d4 to it. Ooh, uh, 26. Uh, well, let me roll the d4. I'm sorry, I got a 22. Um, with the minus one, how the hell do you get a twenty-two? A perception is plus plus three. I rolled a nineteen. Oh, okay, I see, I see. And I get a plus one on the d four. Oh, yeah, I see. So you got a twenty-three. You look down there, and um, yeah, you see the specter. It is um, in a corner, kind of just sitting there, and you've exposed this area to a little bit of light. You know it's not going to like, but you think How where it is. You can't really swing your sword down here. It's okay. a, a very small cellar. It's not even five feet high. Okay. Is the shaft of light created by the trap door more than five feet, or is it just five feet? It's just five feet. You okay. kind of notice it in there because of your dark vision and things. Okay. Um, I turn to Knox and Ayrton. Um, the specter's hiding down there. What do you want to do? I know what Shit. I want to do. Who has magic? Well, I mean, I got, I got, I can root him. I have what's called a fog cloud. I have what's hmm. called thunder wave. Thunder wave would work on it. You don't think the entangle would because it's an insubstantial creature. Right. It can just That's move right through. We can't, I can't hit it, and neither can you, Tark. So we got. If I jump down thing. there, I could. You could. If you jump well, down you can, there, it doesn't have right. a body. It's a ghost. Well, no, you can. You can hit it. it anything in D and D, you can hit. So. Okay. Thank you. I was like, is it something that we have to magic because it doesn't have a body? Now, if you don't have a magic weapon, you don't do as much damage to it. Oh, I see. Can I intimidate it? Unlikely, it's dead. Um, Can we trick it? You can try to. I have a plus three to medicine bandage. No, you, I've already given you... Um, technically, you're not really supposed to heal off of um, a medicine check. 
Oh. I just didn't want you to be out of the game. So. Right. <laughs> and it was a nat 20. That, that's yeah. the reason I gave four hit points and not one. Well, that's what I'm saying. Can I take a turn and bandage myself, or am I going into this? You're already, you're as... already bandaged. Okay, so. well, I'm going. So I'm going into this as the primary attacker with four hit points. All right, all right, I got. This. Well, okay. Well, if you're if you're going to try to go at it, I mean, you don't have to. If you cast Thunder uh, Wave at it, everybody's yeah, going to move first. That's that's what I'm gonna have to do, huh? How okay. how so, damaged is the floor? Pretty bad. How big is the yeah. cellar? What was that? How it's big is the big. cellar? Not that big. So I won't um, be able to stealth behind it. It no. it knows you're up there. Right. I want to tear this floor up and expose it to sunlight. Okay. Well, the thunder wave might do that. Yes, it might. Y'all yeah. just need to get out of my way. <laughs> okay. I now, would like to get out of Lori, here. I'd like you to make a religion check. Okay. Not should make a religion check. What's uh? What am I rolling? D twenty plus your religion modifier. My religion oh. modifier is one, so I roll a seven total. Seven. Okay. And my religion modifier is also a one, so I have a ten total. Okay. Well, I asked Knox to roll, so. <laughs> oh, I thought you said me and Knox. Okay. Nope. I said Knox, Lori, or Knox. So it's fine. Ten wasn't high enough anyway. So. <laughs> uh, okay. So, if everybody moves out of the way. You could thunder wave and uh, try to draw it out. Okay, yo. How you want to do? Y'all want to back up on out of here? Let me blow this floor up. Yeah, I'm gonna get out the way. Okay, so you guys move a bit, and then is it Artrin casts the um, the spell, and it has to make a Constitution saving throw. Okay, and roll damage. There what? That sucked. Three. That sucked. <laughs> the dice are not with me today. Mm -mm. Oh. Okay. What do we even bring you along for? So, like, a couple of boards fell down, and you know. Well, it, the area was pretty damaged, so you blew it up, so you can now kind of get into a fight. Now I want a, another initiative. Uh, somebody else go first. I'm just saying, somebody else go first. Oh, there's really? another fucking B. <laughs> 21. Hey. I rolled better. I need to roll initiative. Yep. Yeah. Is it a net? Is it a twenty die? Yep. Yep. A twenty plus your initiative modifier. <sighs> initiative. Did I roll? Nineteen for me. Pops, you got a what was it? A Twenty-one, you said. Yeah. It's the only thing I'm rolling good at is being first. <laughs> Here, let me get its attention. It'll kill me, so you guys can leave it. Yeah. We're like, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of the way! <laughs> like Arden, you need to sit down. You're like, Aah! I'll get him. Slap. All right, so. Okay. Arden, you're up first. Um, should I, uh, shillelagh? If you bonus action shillelagh, you can walk up and try to hit it. Mm. 
man, I've just had such lousy rolls. Like, do I want to mess around? But I guess 1d8 plus 3, right? Of course, you got to roll the, the one that says plus 5. You got to roll the hit first. <laughs> 13 plus 5 is 18. That, that hits it. Roll damage. Which, which one? That one? Seven. Plus three is ten. Okay, give me one sec. I need to take a look at something real quick. Man, that makes it so much easier. I'm always like, what am I rolling? What am I adding? <laughs> Give me one second here. I gotta eat some lunch. I'm hungry. I gotta eat my. I gotta eat something too soon. Actually, I gotta take my meds. I haven't done that either. Excellent. Counts as a magical weapon, which is what I needed to look at. Say what? Counts as a magical weapon. That is a good thing. That means you do full damage to it. As opposed oh, to nice. So you made a friend. I did. But it's not me. I still don't care. Okay. Uh, it is uh, looking kind of haggard. You have effectively bloodied it. Okay. That would be... Nox's turn. All right. Um, do any of my skills help me attack this thing? Well, like, can I sneak it, or can I... If you move over to attack it, you'll get your sneak attack damage. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. So you move up. Can I Can and... I dual wield it, too? Just because yes. I want to do as much damage as I can. Yep. So roll the hit. That's a 20. 20. It's too high. No, no, no. I, what what dice am I rolling for? Oh, roll a d20, yes. It's d20, d20 plus d20. Uh, plus your dexterity modifier and your proficiency, so it should be plus 5. Okay, so I rolled a 16. That will and then hit. The, the, okay. Now you can roll then, your d8 damage for your rapier and then add a d6 to it. Total is five. And then add three. So eight. Now you hit through it, but you don't really get a, uh, a like a solid connection with it. That uh, it's being insubstantial definitely limits what you can do to it. You still hurt it, you just didn't do as much damage. Well, damn. All right. That will bring us to Tark. Get um, it. I, <laughs> I'm going to move uh, to the side of the of the specter. No, get between it and us, dude. Come on. And trust, trust me. It's uh, it it can hit any of you without much difficulty. <coughs> it still hit him first. And I am going to attack, and I hit 18. That's too high. Yay. Also, yeah. Uh, and I do nine points of damage. Oh, no, up. I do 12. I'm sorry with my bonus. 12. Shrivel up. Float away. You do. I mean, I see you rolled nine plus three. Is, oh, sorry. You're not, you're not raging right now. So. Not yet. No, because we dropped out of combat. So 12 points of damage. Huh? 12. Just 12. Just 12. So that'd be half. So that'd be six. So it disperses. Nice. Hmm. Time to look for loot, you guys. <laughs> well, this is a small hamlet. It's barely a village. Yeah, a six plus one ain't gonna find anything anyway. Well, generally um, speaking, unless something is in, oops, unless something is hidden, um. I generally will just give loot, unless it's specifically hidden. Okay. Well. Um, 
mean, that has to be I mean, thrown, but this is a tiny homelin. Right. You go through the place and search for a bit, you'll come up with about 20 copper. Okay. okay. Since everybody here is dead, they're probably not going to need it anymore. I'm going to search for survivors. There's no one. Okay. Uh, is there a reason no, to look in these other houses? This is be you searching the whole place. Okay. Well, let's do that. I want to see if I can find any reason why this place was attacked. Is is there well, she did that, that a graveyard, person, like a small graveyard or anything nearby? The inspector said we was all going to be serving somebody else, so we didn't get the boss yet. The we got to look queen. around and be cautious. We got to look around and be cautious, so let's stick together, go building to building. Let's do that. Do that. Spectre mentioned the Wraith Queen. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Let's not get split up. Let's not. Let's just investigate one building at a time together as a team. And you you investigate the entire area. There is no people here. No nothing. Oh, I said you're able to come up with about twenty copper between the entire place. Okay, can I roll a perception roll or something to give us some idea where to go next? Well, well, the footprints were leading first south. Came, when you first came here, there was a trail that led off to the south. The southwest. Yeah, we was pretty heavily outnumbered by that bunch of footprints. I didn't know if we was going that way or not. <laughs> you can all make a history check if you wish. See if you know anything about the local area. Ooh, I'm not going to help on that. I rolled a two. Yeah, I rolled a two as well. Oops. I didn't mean to hit it a second. So I got a seven. You got a seven. Yeah. Well, that sucks. Nobody knows anything. Ayrton, you, know you, you rolled a 12. No, that was the second accidental roll. The first oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yep. Ooh, um, Fox, you're able to roll into the thing. I see it. I know. I saw that too. It doesn't let me roll in the chat, but I clicked on the plus one and it rolled the dice. So that was cool. Oh no! It, it rolled. It rolled into the chat. If you yep. um, oh, that's Fox, weird. go back to the I, chat. Go... You, so you can just hit your buttons and it'll roll right to there, and you can just tell us what you get, and it will be fine. Cool. Yeah. I that's will see cool. everything. So moving your token around is basically all we have to do for you. Hooray. Okay. So none of you really know anything about about this area. Probably not from around this area. Um, no. Do we want to follow to the south? Or do we want to explore? Like, where did the footprints start? Did they start at the beginning of the village? They come from all around the buildings and everything. Around the but you're guessing by the number that were there that um, these were probably Spectre. the villagers. Okay. Well, Spectre so doesn't Spectre. leave five people uh, So something turned all these villagers into zombies. And then most of them left probably to join some Queen Wraith army. Which doesn't sound good for us. Alright, I guess head south, yo. Well, Can you we wanna, heal Pops wanna, somehow? Do you want to rest a bit? I was gonna say, I don't know if we probably need to recoup before, because, like, we don't have that many hit points between you and I. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I only have four, so... <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, like, <coughs> I'm at seven out of nine. So even at full power, you, we're not you like. Want to return, totally tough. Do you want to return to the town to gain more information? There could be more. Yeah, stuff let's do there. that. Yeah. You want to go talk to the girl some more? I could yeah, get another drink on her head. More. Well, we can go interrogate her about the Wrath Queen. There you go. That's a good idea. Let's go back to the tavern. Okay. Well, 
She just wants a drink. Yeah, I see. Probably. Well, this is basically you guys are able to take a rest because you've been walking for like half a day and then you did some fighting and all that. So I'm going to give you guys effectively a long rest um, as you head basically before you head back, you guys rest and then head back. Um, that will restore all your hit points and everything. Okay. Can we, can we break here? Is this a good breaking, um, a resting point? Yep, yeah, I can break here. Uh, actually, I had a one little thing I wanted to do when we get back to the tavern. Oh, let's do that. It's very small and minor. Just because I have other things I have to do too. Yes, I noticed there was a little girl behind you. Yes, that. <laughs> so, you are back at the tavern. You might have to scroll up, Pops, or down. There it is. Okay, so. The girl has taken ill. Oh. And, you, um... You can go, you, go check on the girl, Knox. You're the one that started this. Go check on Well, you don't, you don't have to move into it. I'm just going to kind of narrate what's happening. Okay. The girl has taken ill a little bit. Um, the bar keeps a bit worried about her, as is the maid that was kind of watching over her. Um, she's been calling out things we couldn't understand on occasion, and the room has gotten very cold. Um, can I do a I mean, perception check of the room? You could make an arcana check. An arcana check. That's not going to do us much good, but I will. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I noticed Ooh. nothing. <laughs> you do know this, that there is I magic of force. I have a plus three to Arcana. Can I do Well, that? then why don't you come yeah, in you here? Can, you can roll it. There we go. How about a 22? Okay. So Nox is thinking about it for a moment, and she's like, Sounds like necromancy. And um, then Arden's like, that is necromancy. And then you kind of look to the girl and you realize that she has a passenger. That something is in her. A entity of some form. And it's beginning to corrupt this place. And if you don't get the entity out soon... This town will suffer the same fate. And we will end there. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, dun, dun. See, you guys were all making fun of me about pouring drinks on this girl, but she ain't what you thought she was. <laughs> um, I didn't she mind going that. anywhere near that little girl. She's a little girl that's possessed by the devil, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just poured a drink bar. on the devil's head. What? My, remember um, me sitting over here in the bar minding my own business while you guys were doing all that shit? <laughs> well, I was just looking at the adventure just means that bad things will happen. So, hey, I'm um, telling you. so that being said, <laughs> all of you can level up to two. two. Yay. So you all gain a level. You can go to level two. How do I do that? Uh, okay, if you go into your character sheet, there's a um, piece on it that lets you level up. There's a what? You can if you click on your go to builder, the little anvil. Uh huh. Then you hit the drop down, hit two, and it'll bump you to level two. I do not see a little anvil. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Hey man, I haven't played D and D since I was like 16, and we didn't have none of this electronic stuff, so I don't. It's like and a it brand spanking new. Yeah. All right, so you, level two. You should be able to, if you, you see where it says manage character character and levels pops? Um, Over on the side window where the chat is. There. Right there. Click that. There you go. It's like two. So when I level up, does it, it doesn't change any of my stuff, just my hit points? Changes your hit points, you get a bunch of abilities that you can now use, including 
cunning action. Pops gets to pick a druid circle. A druid circle. Yep, so what I want you to do in the off time, go through the different circles and pick what you want. All right. This is this is how you're tied to it. You also now have access to a few more spells that you can have in memory. Oh, thank goodness. All right. Then. Well, that was fun. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, I like yeah. being snarky. <laughs> So, would we like to continue so, next week? So, I got to roll yeah. a 1d8. Sure. See how many new no, hit you, points. your hit points auto do everything for you. Don't worry about it. It's already done. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Now that I figured out how to roll the, the dice for most of the things, this should be a lot easier. Fantastic. Well, guys, I'd like to thank you for watching the inaugural episode of Gaming with Alley Cat here on the Madness and on my Twitch channel, um, which is Alleycat underscore comics. I hope you all had a great time and um, enjoyed the show. I have blessed we'll you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Can I, can I throw up. in a promo? Yes, you yeah. may. Definitely. Uh, we're doing a Facebook Live tonight uh, with myself and three other indie comic book creators. We're all in the zombie genre. Um, so if you want to see some people nerd out about the zombie genre and hear what we have to say about why zombies will never die, come join us tonight on the Facebook Live. We start at um, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. Um, it's called Zombie Talk, so you'll be able to find us. And she will... Drop the link in the madness before the show starts so y'all don't miss it. You know what's up. Just start breaking notes there. All right, I everyone. I dropped it in the madness day. already. But uh, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Mwah. Peace.